Ukraine's security has become a major global concern and of course it's uh, a critical issue in multi-level conversations around the world. Now developing countries are also hardest hit uh, in world's food crisis and this is evident by of course the widening poverty index uh, in Nigeria for instance. Uh, we know that the multi-dimensional poverty index as released by the National Bureau of Statistics and uh, its development partners uh, reveal a very startling figure. It says uh, more than uh, 130 million Nigerians, 133 specifically Nigerians, million Nigerians are multidimensionally uh, poor. Now that report also mentions food sector as one of the high deprivation areas and of course uh, you know many factors uh, account for this global uh, you know food crisis situation one of course is global warming uh, and its impact on farming the other of course uh, you we could also point at the Ukraine Russian war uh, you know what that is uh, impact that is having on on food supplies around the world there's also dwindling resources of course from crude oil and uh, what still uh, will be the um, exploding population. Uh, we all know, of course, uh, that is fast outgrowing uh, demands and available food supplies, especially here in Nigeria. We know our population is growing, and uh, we are told by 2030 or even 2050, our population will double. Now, in view of all these, it's become very imperative for countries like ours to grow more indigenous uh, food uh, crops. Uh, diversify into new products, improve our nutritional value, of course the nutritional value of the food crops that we have uh, in areas such as packaging and of course better uh, standard maintenance. So it is uh, in this regard that players in this uh, agri sectors, especially those so far within the agri technologists, you know, have uh, are nudging governments and other decision makers to encourage producers of uh, agro allied products uh, in Nigeria to use technology or to infuse technology and innovation you know into processes of our raw food materials and of course a value addition and also to create a market so on late edition this week we will engage those who are already making impact making efforts to change Nigeria's narrative in attaining food security on this note I'd like to welcome all of you again to this week's edition of late edition I am Claire Adilabu Abdurazak So I start off with my first guest, and he is Sani Gar Mohammed Sani uh, Garba. He is an entrepreneur who, of course, ventured into business at some time in his early life, uh, early years, and advanced his career in small and medium enterprises as well as uh, value chain systems at the national levels. Now, over the years, uh, he has successfully engineered business ideas, strategies, effective planning, packaging, and branding uh, made in Nigeria products. He's a leading expert and aggregator for export. He's consistently adding value to various agricultural products for local and international markets. You'll get to see uh, quite a number of those varieties that he's added value into. He is a 2021 SME's Day Award winner of Entrepreneurial Impact Award, and that's because of the recognition of outstanding contributions in entrepreneurship development and growth of indigenous businesses in Nigeria. Mohamed Sani Garba is a certified business development service provider and he is the co founder of Business Visa and Trainings Company Limited and it's based here in Abuja, Nigeria. All right, my second guest is a lady and she's Mrs. Quinn Useria. She's a graduate of business management from the River State University of Science and Technology. She has a master's degree in logistics and supply chain management 
from the University of South Wales in United Kingdom. And uh, after her service, or her studies I should say, she relocated to Nigeria uh, where she started a healthy uh, food processing company in Abuja. That's where we're based. Uh, but she has outlets outside of Abuja uh, within the country. She is also a pioneer member of Business Visa. Uh, that's a community where small-scale producers and manufacturers come together to learn, promote homemade products. That is indigenous products and made in Nigeria products. Queen Oseria Oseria is an advocate of made in Nigeria brands. That's uh, M-I-N-B. So ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome my two special guests to late edition. Thank you very much for joining me on, on the program. <coughs> and uh, just to say that uh, these are very beautiful colors. You know, food uh, nutritionists say make your food, you know, multicolor. And then uh, we've seen a display of those colors here, though they are in the raw state. <laughs> but let, let, let me begin on a very general note. And that's a note where we usually ask, you know, where Nigeria is today in terms of when we talk about uh, uh, basic needs, food security, you know, food sufficiency and all that. We have quite enormous resources in terms of food. But where would you place Nigeria today, Mohammed? Let me start with you. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, you see, basically, we have to know that Nigeria is unique in the whole world. We, we cannot use other countries to uh, quantify what Nigeria should be. Uh, in terms of food, is Nigeria the only country that has multiple choices? We don't have stable food like other countries. If you take out one variety of food, you can never stop Nigerians. Take me yeah, out. Really? Of course, <laughs> yes. We have, they are visible. Yeah. You know, you need to know what your country has before you start complaining. Mm. If you think Gari is our stable food, take Gari out. A oh, lot no. of number would not oh. be stable. <laughs> and uh, if you think it's maize, so we, we, we are privileged to have multiple choices. Mm -hmm. You will be hungry and then uh, in, in Nigeria you'll be thinking of, okay, what do I take? Yesterday, what have, I, what have I eaten? You know, you have random choices and we have some snacks, fruits that you take them like food. So we are quite different. And to confirm this, I had a visit of uh, the uh, Bulgarian ambassador who came. Uh, looking for alternative mm. of uh, flour because mm. of the uh, the war going on, and guess what? When he see random other flowers, he say, "Look, I show him sesame flower, I show him uh, cassava flower, maize flower, sorghum." He was saying, "Can we make bread out of this?" <laughs> <laughs> you see, he, they don't even know what we have, mm. and he came there to see alternatives and also um, vegetable oils. Guess what? In Nigeria, we have multiple numbers of some, them. Some, some people think that uh, staple is rice, and you know, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Even rice, we don't have one variety of rice. We have our local rice that are even uh, identified by those localities, like the Kura rice or Fada rice. Those are all local ones. And any breed you bring in from outside, we'll domesticate it. We'll make it our own our own type of rice because of the environment we have. Mm -hmm. And guess what? We are talking of threatening. Look at up to now in the whole Nigerian states, there is no one state that is fully mechanized, is doing mechanized farming. It's just using our own uh, tools, local tools, and you get all these random foods. Imagine if one, five states now come on board and say we want to go full mechanized. It will, food will be overflowing. Mm. So we cannot be comparing ourselves with other nations. We should identify our own unique uh, uh, issues and tackle them. Mm. You know. And when we say there are floods, look at the hectares of land we have. It's not everywhere that we have floods. Mm. So we should now make use of those areas that has not been tempered with. Mm. And besides, if anything comes, 
If you look at the negative part of it, definitely there will be a positive part of it. We don't have just a staple food. I mean, we have varieties. You take out one, Nigerians will not starve. So it's, we are not, um, comparatively, you are saying that Nigeria is far ahead. Yes. That's well, what you're saying. Yes. And the thread we, only, we, we should now hit on is that all the people, especially foreigners, are coming to see. Nobody will come to Nigeria and want to leave. Some they come for one purpose or the other, and when they see that, they will now find a home to stay. Tell them there is trade in the villages. They will go. They Queen, will go Queen, first. Queen, so what, what do you say to that? Is, is that what you see <laughs> as a woman? Yeah. Absolutely. The interesting thing about our raw materials mm. are, is that we have, for every raw material you get, you have um, endless, the value chain is endless. Mm. So you could make um, akara from beans flour, you could make more and more, you could make multiple things. And we've not been able to even um, research on other things. And our foods are both, uh, our raw materials, they can be food to us and medicine as well. Okay. You know, so people make certain things from moringa, and moringa is food. Mm -hmm. So I hear that in the north, they use moringa leaf to cook as, as well, you know? <laughs> Just like you use your vegetables. Mm. Uh, yes, in, you know, and, yeah, well. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> so, uh, and then uh, there's moringa oil as well. Uh, there's moringa, I've seen moringa capsules, they do different things as well. So that's the interesting thing about it. So talking about um, food security, mm. I think it's for us to begin to work. I'm glad you've talked about policy making, mm. uh, that, that's, that's, that's moving ahead. They will champion the cause as well. And I'm happy that you've called pioneers mm -hmm. um, in the industry to come talk about, yes. talk about it. Th th mm. th th thank you. So if we look at the different regions you think we can find you know enough you know food uh, grains you know that we can add value that's i mean enormous value absolutely he talked about uh, corn corn so the interesting thing is you're wondering what's a staple food so if you take out rice there's something to substitute if you take out corn there's something to substitute so we have multiple grains people don't even know about it hmm. There addition. was a particular grain you were, you, you know, I, I saw when I visited you. Yes. Uh, you said it was black, black. Yeah, you see, it's a sesame. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, God bless Nigeria with the best of everything and in different varieties. We are the only ones in the world known to me that we have everything in different variety, like the sesame you're talking about. The world knows about the white system. But here in Nigeria, we have the white one and, the black one, and we have the brown one, and we have the black one. And guess what? They're not just ordinary. They're, their oil contents supersede any, any, any other anywhere else. And the fiber, too, is quite strong. Okay. Talk about sorghum. We don't have just the white sorghum. We have them in colors and we have them in different sizes. Mm -hmm. The maize too, we have them in different sizes, and we have them in colors, and we have them in different tastes. We have the sweet one. Look, you can just, at your backyard, raining season, you now just throw some seed there, and it will Absolutely. grow there, and you go back there after a few months, you cut it off and cook it straight. Nobody, you know, we, the privilege we have in Nigeria, honestly, we cannot be comparing our own uh, Nigeria with any other. That is why I'm insisting that at all time, we should come up with a Nigerian standard of goods. Let, them be, let the world be making reference that I need sesame, Nigerian sesame. Sesame from Nigeria, corn from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Let us you know, establish that. You know, each, each time we talk about, um, we, we, we try to measure you know our our standard we, we we look at you know the western world or we look at europe now even with the um with the e e epa or you know that sorry not epa now with the african after yep. you know coming on board now we're still talking about or asking or questioning what areas of comparative advantage you know, does Nigeria have? And if we are to diversify into agriculture and make agriculture what it should be, which, do we have enough varieties 
where we have comparative advantage. Mm -hmm. Queen? Oh, yeah, we, we do. Absolutely. We do. Why not? Um, like we said, if you look at a particular grain, you could get multiple products from that, yes. from that grain. Yes. Do we have any of those that you have? Oh, yes, we do. Um, this is Gary. Yes, okay. Um, I would like to use Moringa. Okay. If you don't mind. Yes. Yeah, so this is the Moringa tea. Okay. Um, made from the leaves. Okay. The seeds mm. as well. Mm. Um, it's another thing. If you thing. could just turn it so that the camera can do right. it. That's Moringa. Okay. Yeah, that's Moringa. Okay. So the seeds as well. Mm. Um, the, I've also seen where they blend the, the leaves and then mix them into another kind of green and make cakes from it. Okay. Yeah, so that's a healthier version of, uh, of make, cake. Yes, instead of using your regular wheat flour. <laughs> okay. Instead of using your regular and wheat the flour. Fresh, and the fresh leaf too, you can use it like salad. You cook it and then apply some uh, groundnut powder and you take it. Mm. Mm. And you see... Uh, so, so why do we still have, if, if we have all this, why are our farmers struggling? Yes, you see, like we said, I try to draw your attention to no state, one state in Nigeria that is fully farming mechanized in a mechanized way. They are just using their own smart ways mm -hmm. and some few tractors <clears throat> and, and so on. But yet, look at, we still don't complain. Mm -hmm. So imagine now we said we're going to go fully out. We have the land abundant land. Do you know how many hectares Nigeria has? And especially in the north, that nobody farms it every year. So, but then, look at the uh, uh, river, Ch uh, this Chad Basin. Chad Basin. I visited there. Like now when we are saying plod, plod everywhere. What, how do they tackle theirs there? When the, the water is now draining, they now start planting, right. planting. Right. Because the water has stayed there for some time, so it has sink down there. If you just take advantage of it, within no time it will still yield. Mm -hmm. And it's there that I've seen someone who farm and say, look, I'm, I'm, I'm hard enough. Anybody who needs it, he should go and, and pick it up. So we have not utilized our land fully. I had a friend from uh, Israel who came. He said he's an, an electric engineer. And they have boundaries, he shouldn't, like a red areas that he should not cross there yeah. in the north. It's a red area. His uh, jurisdiction is Abuja, Lagos, and Potako. Those were the places he worked. But he pleaded to me that, please, can I just go to north and see the land they have? I said, where will you see that land? He said, no. You know what it means? When you have land to farm, you have everything. He said, I'm willing to just fulfill my expertise line and go to farming if I will have a land. Do you know he was pushy when I said, okay, I'll take you to a place to see uh, how we now uh, farm uh, uh, tomato in excesses. Mm -hmm. I said, but it's about four hours from here. He said he's willing to go. It's a no-no for him, but he's willing to go just to go and see. So you can imagine, and we see the multiple tomatoes and that's what motivated me to, for him to now say, okay, you know what? I have a seedling for you, mm -hmm. which are those cherry tomatoes. I've mm -hmm. never seen those ones before, those round tomatoes. Yeah. Yes. They sell them in kilos. Yes. And he gave it to me. Say, you can try this in your house. And he took me to his house where they stay. And they're renting the place. They said they don't buy anything out there. Mm. They farm mm. everything within the house. And when I planted that cherry tomato, Honestly, I, I just stop. It's just like magic. Every bunch you have like five, six, and all of a sudden, every two, three days, I go plug them, no way. stock them, giving out, start giving it out. And from nowhere, beds start coming to, to element. From them. Yes. <laughs> they grow, they, 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 they are climbing tomatoes. Mm -hmm. I have to put, yes. So you can imagine now if we have a full big plot. So, so of what, this. what do you think? think is or are the issues uh, because a large percentage of you know those who farm at the moment are smallholder farmers mm -hmm. others do just basically subsistence and again that goes to show that you know the large percentage of land is unused so what do you see as you know what do you think are the issues or the I, I don't want to say challenges 
why is that so? We shouldn't all go to farming. Yeah. We should first <laughs> identify what are those ones on ground first. What are we doing with them? You know, mm -hmm. if you identify that, then you will now establish no. We, we the farming we have enough of that. So all the the, the space we need to. Uh, come in is yes. just to process it okay, and process. not just that we should now s find a market the radio market but Queen um, I'm curious to know what motivated you 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 are the co-founder of Cora Foods, Foods. Mm -hmm. and uh, you, you you studied um, logistics and supply exactly. chain <laughs> yes so for you, what, what was the motivation? That, that's a good question. So if I have to play my tape backwards, I'll study maybe something like entrepreneurship. So I come and I do full business. Okay. And the idea for full business is to tackle issues like this. It's, it's very interesting. I got excited when he talked about um, food processing okay. and things like that. And that's where we should be. So we can't all go to the farm, like he said. We can't all. Uh, we need to understand our palate. We need to invest more in capacity building. We need to educate farmers more. There are more, um, there are different technologies out there, and there are better ways of growing these things. We need to adapt. We also need the government to step in. And why we want the government to step in is to um, build big, and by big I mean getting those farmers involved, and some of us involved that are into food, food processing. So what excited me about um, when he talked about um, not all going to the farm, the rest of us should talk about food processing, exhaust the entire value chain of Gene different of products. Uh, for me, moving back to Nigeria was just for purpose. You know, after school, I just thought of, okay, so what can I do uh, back home? I need to come back home and find myself. So finding myself is what I'm doing now. I'm still learning. And interestingly, I found an umbrella body like Business Visa. Mm -hmm. He talked about uh, distribution as well. That's a challenge. Mm -hmm. You find so, a lot so what of aspect of the value chain are you... So what I, what, our flagship product is Cora Crunch. And uh, that we have made with unripe plantain flour. So the regular use for like unripe plantain flour would be to eat it, you know, yes. make it like swallow and then mm -hmm. eat it. So for those that are diabetic, I just... <laughs> Mm. Oh, well, that's a plantain you fly. Yeah, you plantain, fly. You fly. Okay, yes. plantain flour. Yeah, so you okay. could make maybe pancakes or something like that okay. with it, but we thought of doing something different. So what we have in the market more is the plantain chips. Mm -hmm. So it looks like that's the only thing you can get out of plantain, but there could be more. So we decided to do something a bit different. Uh, we use the plantain flour, mix it with the honey, just to give it that sweet taste and also preserve it, cut it into shapes and then what, what, bake, bake it. What gap did you see mm -hmm. that you wanted to fill why why plantain uh plantain is we're looking for an indigenous green okay. um something that grows virtually all year round that's not very scarce raw material that's not very scarce also something accessible as well uh, we have many accessible greens but i decided to work with plantain because um, i was looking for a niche market you know for those that are wheat watchers mm -hmm. diabetics and things like that mm -hmm. so plantain is what is known to to, to them mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. okay uh, uh, mr garba uh, again you you have uh, i mean looking at some of the products here uh we've seen this is just innovation you know, and technology, you know, on display here. Again, I'd like to ask you, what did you see? What are the gaps, you know, that motivated you, uh, that you are trying to fill, you know, in, in, in the agri sector? Yeah, first of mm -hmm. all is that um, why uh, Africans treat differently? We're the only continent that in the whole world we go to manufacturer and we ask him to fabricate a processing machine and we pay off 100%. So I was wondering why, and it's intentional. So if we are aware of that, we should come on board and change the narrative. Yeah. Government should not go or individuals buy off uh, equipment of processing and whatever happened along the way, you're on your own. Absolutely. That's why you see a lot of scraps mm -hmm. over there. Mm -hmm. And what they do differently to the other part of the world 
is that you come up with your projections, mm -hmm. share it with the manufacturer, mm -hmm. and he will be teaming with you so that he will bring in his equipment right. and agreed after sales of that on payment, sub payment over long time. Yeah. His product, uh, his equipment that you are using mm. is an advertisement for him. Right. If anything happens to it, he will come and fix it. Mm -hmm. If there is an upgrade, he will come and upgrade it. Right. You see, you are doing that business simultaneously with him. But right. in African case, they sideline us. They are just there to, like a storage warehouse. When we need, they are not good enough to process. I say, no, we have to change the narrative. Mm -hmm. And what do we get? Even if we said, okay, we agreed we are now a storage or a warehouse, how much are they buying those things when they come? Mm -hmm. Is it at an international rate? No. They come, bid on their own rate, break all our rules, take them out. Break the rules, but, but, but do you blame them? The system. If you don't identify this, you cannot find the system. Someone to come into your country, immigration is liable. Mm -hmm. They have given him a clearance. And what kind of uh, clearance, clearance do they give him? Right. And again, for him to now have access to places that he should not. And some of them, if they come in, they are now coming in on base on clearance to work in a, in a factory. Mm -hmm. And that factory exposed them to see how weak we are. Right. And they will now Cut resign <laughs> and now start peddling to, from our villages, from our local markets mm. to feed those factories. And from there, he will now grow wings to now exporting out there and connive with some Nigerians or some uh, people from his side, bring in money. There is free money here. Right. Let us build factory. Up, yeah. And when we set up a factory, mm. what happened? We now export those things. When we bring back to export, uh, to expand the factory, the same government will now give us free money. Absolutely. Who will not do that? So if we can identify all the sins, we shouldn't fold our arms. Okay, Ma 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 I'll, I'll just, it's at a very uh, uh, good point, you know, that I'll just post a conversation. So when we come back, we'll be looking at the quality of the what you have done what you're doing mm -hmm. and see how exportable these are you know and um, what kind of revenue you know do you think uh, we can you know garner uh, from our value you know addition to our crops and, and, and all that all right you're watching late edition this week and uh, uh, we're looking at um, using innovation of course to enhance our food security and I have a very interesting guest with me don't go away we'll be right back you can't fight piracy you can't fight a war therefore you don't claim your rights the challenge I see is in the fiscal do we have to wait until we have a problem see, the problem with those who speak on behalf of themselves and the country is that they should have facts. I'm speaking now as Minister for Transport. For you to become economically independent, you must have to curtail the level of importation of other people's products and services. How rich you are, you can't bring certain vehicles into the, into the country. Okay. There's no competitiveness within the state. I am Claire Adilabu Abdulazak. Thanks for joining me. All right, welcome back. This is late edition this week. So um, let me start this segment with uh, Queen. And uh, I, I like for Queen to again talk to us because uh, we are watching <laughs> and everybody, you know, Nigeria so much wants to attain food, self-sufficiency in food production or agri and all that. And the government has been making, especially this administration, has, you know, really made tremendous efforts, either via fiscal or monetary policies and, and, and all that. So we talked about the system, you know, being the club. Um, what do you think is wrong within the system? 
Okay, I think um, certain policies should be reviewed. All right, certain policies should be reviewed to include the farmers, those of us making the finished products, and the entire. We're talking about diversification. Mm -hmm. You know, and what we've been trying, in my opinion... How, how, do, how do you mean? Because right now we'll see a lot of attention given to agro-allied, you know, produce, producers of agro-allied products. But that's what I'm saying. So yes. we're doing from primary to primary. Mm. <laughs> so that's what we're saying. We're doing from primary to primary. We need to step up. He talked about distribution. Distribution remains a challenge. So what Business Visa has been able to do, all right, mm -hmm. is to create an umbrella where those of us that are producing, small business owners, mm -hmm. just, in my opinion, dump our products. So what they do literally. is... Literally. Because he sees the frustration. So you have a beautiful product. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't end there. It should end your money. You talk about frustration. Yes. So please share with us some of those frustrations. That's he mentioned a few of them. Yes. I think even without yeah, knowing... Because, he because you, he, you, are, you are in the front line. So you, he you talked can, about missionaries. I was excited when he said that. Mm. How these foreigners make these machines and you bear the risk 100%. Most of us have bought machines not to get to Nigeria and we're dealing with different issues. Most of the machines are dumped. Mm. And these machines don't come cheap. These machines don't come cheap. So that in itself is frustration on its own. And you know, when, when you do business like this, a part of you is here. So you should end from here, build from here, yeah. and even grow from here. Mm -hmm. you know? So things like that. He talked about um, policies to help us. There are a lot of people that can fabricate machines here. Okay. But I don't know if the government is not aware or they've been able to do something for them. They could form a cluster. Mm -hmm. We all have different machines processing different things, but there's a mm -hmm. common thread tying us around you know if you see some of these products here some are into powder so that means yes. that person will need a grinder yes yes so like like this what's this <coughs> what's this um, wheat okay that's this, wheat. this wheat. Mm. Uh, so this is plantain flour okay mm. uh, to there's beans flour as well yeah. what's Okay. okay, this is uh, this is onion onion flakes. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, this is beans flour. Okay. So for somebody making this and making probably what planting, what what do you do with the beans flour? So the beans flour, yes, like the okay. Yes, and this person, in mm. fact, this person went a step further to spice it. So meaning you don't need much. Yes. You don't need much. So all the ingredients you need in making the moi moi is all dried and in here. So what you need is just. Uh, to cook it, mix it probably with water, and then cook it. That's it. Hmm. How convenient can it be? Hmm. And market would also be a challenge for you? It is a challenge. Sincerely, local and... Um, I don't want to talk export yet because we're so many, and I think we should push up. We're 200 and something million. If we sell one bag of everything, what are we talking about? We have a bigger market now. We have. In Africa. <clears throat> the mm. after is a bigger market for us. Yeah. So it depends on what we have to, to sell. You see, regarding, before we jump to the market, mm. <clears throat> regarding the machines too, why we insist in using the, or buying the foreign machines mm. is that the fabrications you can take, we don't have the right metal like, to use. Yes, and you can just take the rigs mm. of uh, bruising iron uh, and then mixing with your food to take it. So we now because have that, to. That, that might compromise the Absolute. quality. Absolutely. Yeah. So okay. that's why we don't want our food to, for them to ridicule us because they believe we shouldn't be part of value addition. Yep. So it should be like a good excuse. Oh, look at some trace of metal in there. Right. So we shouldn't use our fabricated machines. That's why we need to go out there and negotiate with them, not to buy it off. Bring in your, mach your machine in any business, numbers matters. Mm -hmm. And we have the numbers here and we have the needs. And yeah. they need our own product. They only classify us that we are not good enough because they don't want the value uh, addition to now come up from us, uh, to, to, to initiate from us. And I think that's on purpose. <clears throat> it is, of course. So, but then, when we get the missions from them, 
we find out that they, even the machine, they do our own fabrication coming to Africa in different standards. Absolutely. So that you keep going back because they notice that. They look at you like a poor person. You come in and you're saying, ah, you want to buy, pay off. And no joke, you pay off. Mm -hmm. Is it real? And we are, one of us now is coming out to tell the world we are a corrupt country, we are this, this. They just say, okay, let me share a piece of it. We are never corrupt before. It's when we open our doors to foreigners Cor that this corruption, corruption keeps is coming. Global. And it's if we say name. corruption, maybe it's just a name. In America, they target like lobbying. It's the same method. What you do there is what you do here. But they said it lobbying. And lawyers, often an office is a lobbyist office. Yeah. You want this out? We should not be putting negativity in all our mm -hmm. aspects that we are doing. We should see a bit of good things there. And that's why this thing will never change, except if we now drill completely from those things. We should say, no, enough. You want this product, then you should patronize it. So you said something <coughs> earlier on about value chain. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's as safe uh, those people are afraid that we might you know, step up to, you know, th that value chain addition, and they don't want that. Yes. They don't want us to do that. That's yeah. it. But we have the capacity to do that. Absolutely. Of course, yes. Absolutely. That is why, you see, in Business Visa, we change the narrative from them placing an order. You cannot place an order on what you have no knowledge about it. Like I've said, our products are unique and different. And how will, do we get those t across the border? is by denying them accepting those specifications that are giving us on, on, on a paper. Mm -hmm. I need dryness it's, of this it's, ginger, it's, this. It's so the way we change it yes, yes, is, is this way. I intentionally say, no, we have other things, this which you don't know. So we now give them samples of those products. If you're asking for sesame products and you're giving me specification, I say, now, take the white one, Take the brown one, take the, take black, the one. black one. They're all from Nigeria. Setting our own If standards. you go on there, <laughs> just make a reference that I need the brown one. You don't need to tell me specification. Mm -hmm. And guess what is happening? What, what do you mean by specification? What do they, they mean? They come with, like <laughs> now they say, I need a, a, um, a sesame with a, with, a, with, a, with a fiber this level, and our own fiber grade is even higher, higher. than what they're asking for. Okay. And when they buy it at a radical price, they will never come back to you. And, and when we now, the value. they will not. Uh -huh. And even when we change the, the method by sending them samples to place orders on those things, guess what happened? They will never share with you. They will say, look, we are willing to do away with the ones we are doing with, we are working with, we are willing to buy yours. Can we get it consistently? You know, so basically they are telling you that you have the best product and they don't want it one off. Mohammed, <laughs> Mohammed and <laughs> Queen, let, let, me, let me pause you. We'll just uh, uh, take your jingle. Right. And then we'll be right back. Okay. Fellow Nigerians, the president and his vice have always emphasized the need to patronize made in Nigerian products and services to help grow the economy of our dear nation. Businesses will expand and that will lead to more jobs, boost the nation's growth domestic products and improve our foreign exchange earnings. We must patronize our highly competitive products and services, take advantage of our large population to stimulate economy. Nigerians, be patriotic. Think Nigeria and put Nigeria first. We must prioritize our great range of products and services before considering others. It's all on us and in our hands. All right, welcome back to our late edition this week. And uh, once again, we're looking at using or uh, how we can use technology and innovation to enhance our food security. And I have Mohammed Sani Garba, who is the MDCO of Business Visa Company Limited in Abuja, and also 
Queen Oseria, uh, who is also the co-founder of Kura Foods, also here in Abuja. And both of them, of course, have been uh, making tremendous efforts to ensure that we add value to our food crops and, you know, some of uh, their efforts uh, on, on display uh, right here in the studio. And I'm going to ask again, uh, maybe I should start with the lady now, uh, to, to speak to us about, you know, the quality of, you know, some of your finished uh, the products, because that's usually a concern especially where we are, you know, uh, marketing those products uh, outside the country. Yeah, so, we, we, there are a few products here on display. Mm. Um, over time, for us personally, what Business Visa has done is to meet us where we are. So by that I mean um, small producers. Yes. Once you have your product, Yes, you, we know you need to package it, but we also understand you don't have the means to package it. All right, bring it to us. Mm -hmm. uh, we have trainings, business visa and training. Mm -hmm. We have trainings from time to time, capacity building training. So, where you, we so you have you. small holders to absolutely, package? Absolutely, absolutely. Teach you how to package, what materials to use to package uh, the products, four different products. There are a few products here. Most of the products here... All right, uh, full, the packaging material use a food grade products, uh, uh, packaging materials. All right, okay. acceptable everywhere. Now, there are some countries that are, um, that do not accept nylon bags. Yes. You know, they only use mm -hmm. paper, paper mm -hmm. packaging, depending on the products we have. I but think not, now, now, now that the world is turning, is going green. Right. Is that, is that compliant? Is that a for me, I, For me, I would say that it's a journey. All right, we're somewhere, we're going somewhere. Um, for those other countries, they're already far industrialized, so they can go way ahead. We're coming. Mm. So, we're so, coming. So this is what so we can ones afford. So now can't be exported. We can only... They, oh, can, be ex they can be exported. They're already out of this yeah. country. We have a few, we have a few products that are, okay. that are making it outside. Mm. Like which one? Most of them have gone yes. out. You see, most of them we see with a window like this. Okay. Yeah, they, they have gone out. Wh the why, why is that? This window uh, prevents the custom from opening it. They just right. shake it on and okay. it does it. And mm. beside that, you see packaging, like, mm. like mm. a packaging thing. Look at this, mm. Gary. Mm. Yes. Peculiar to Nigeria. Mm. Not even Ghana. They took mm. our Gary there. Mm. So this is the best... Um, mm -hmm. This is the best. Yeah, so just hold it up so the camera can. Okay, this know. is the best pack, uh, fast food. And we're here, some people selling noodles, telling you that it's fast food. <laughs> this you can have it anywhere instantly with either. This uh, is from peanuts, uh, yeah, from yeah. granites. Kuli. So you can. No, mix let's it. have that. Let's see, have that, uh, Kuli. Yes, you yeah, see. So Kuli well and, and Gary. Yeah. It goes the, well. <laughs> <laughs> with goals, with beans, yeah. with goals. So yes, yeah, stay, stay on to it. So yeah. we, we, can, yeah. we can trade all this into the world. Mm. And that's why some Nigerians, when they, who find their way out there for training mm. or schools, mm -hmm. they find it very tempting to take this thing out. And in the airport, they keep explaining, this I is this, this is it. Yes, I, I look at here, one product not. here, which is sesame. Yeah. This is also produced here of in course, Nigeria. Yes. It's, mm -hmm. it's a snack, sesame. Mm. You see, and this oil from it, that's the value addition. You take, you have the, the, the raw one, I mean the snacks from it, which you can, is flavored with mm. sugar and that one, ginger, ginger, okay. Okay. ginger honey. and the honey. Okay, mm -hmm. okay this, is, this is ginger and honey. Yes, mm -hmm. and we have a powder from the uh, same. So, so, sorry, when you, when you pick up one, please hold on, to, on to it so that the camera can establish. Okay, yes, these are so. all from the same product. Mm. Still hold on, Just please. since sesame. And... Going on still, <laughs> the same system, you shall have this again. Look at all one product, value addition. And what do we do with it? We don't patronize it. <laughs> and guess what? If you consume this, you never go sick. Sorry, you, you need to say that again because this is yeah. what we're here. We're trying to promote, you know, uh, our Made in Nigeria product. That's right. So he says, w what is this? You need this to is a up. sesame oil. And Just hold it up Nigerian so that sesame get oil. And there's a flower from the seed as well. Okay. This oil, can, you just, can you just make the oil? So that, okay. Yeah, there's mm. the oil. Mm. See? And very healthy. Mm. Ask the world. 
outside world mm. about Nigerian sesame oil. Mm. And even you, you can prove me wrong by using it. And from the time you want to use it, please take, a, take your photo before and, and <laughs> after. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you see the how, difference? How easy is it to get, to get certification, NAFDAQ, what you ordinarily would call NAFDAQ number? Because yes. I know that since, like she said, smallholder, you know, producers, uh, still looking for support and encouragement, right. mm -hmm. it will not be easy to get, you know, yeah, that, bef that, that, was, that was before. And okay, now. So now it's incidentally, easy. we had a visit, uh, the, the board chairman visited our office. He had about us and he came. He said, I am here to work. I want to make <laughs> things easy. And he actually did. He said, from now onward, from now onward, there shouldn't be uh, two years, three years waiting for NAFDAQ certification number. It's going to be three months either positive or negative. And he really de does, does that. And secondly, he promised no four rooms, operation rooms. He, now it's just a room and a parlor. Mm. So they have really considered a whole lot of things and he has proven. That is why we always advocate that. It's not the policies. It's the individual governing the policies. Right. When you change, you now find out like what is happening. This man is making things happen. It's not magic. It's so, individual, individual it, it, yes. that matters. So quickly talk, talk to us about the technologies that you have applied you know, in, in all of these. And it, can it be escalated to the larger, you know, uh, on a larger scale? Yes, in terms of technology, that's, it applies on the equipment. Yes. And the equipment, we have uh, an individual uh, who is uh, Mohammed uh, uh, Sanusi Barkindo, led OPEC secretary. Mm -hmm. He took it upon him as a payback. He doesn't want to, the world to say it, but he's led now. I'm saying it to the world. He has been contributing that. Any entrepreneur who wanted, uh, who has declared what he wants to do, he now came on board and paid for those equipments and it should be given to them free. And we have demonstrated that. So we, have, we didn't compromise on using the standard equipment. And we have some embassies too who came, who wanted to partner with us. And uh, we said, you don't just go and fabricate machines because the ones we have already from China and elsewhere, they consume a lot of light right. and also their, their blades are not strong. Because if you bring the blade that you are processing sesame from maybe other African countries, yep. if you try Nigerian bread, uh, Nigerian seed, it will break it up. So one. we give them the physical one. And they wanted us to come in numbers. So now, now, now that the world is talking about you know, food insecurity and how we can reverse that, and Nigeria is also in this global conversation, uh, what would be your message you know, again to the Nigerian government and to all the stakeholders you know, involved in um, mainstreaming agriculture you know, into the di diversification policy of government. Yes, we will call mm. on, uh, especially CBN governor, that he has uh, taken a decision. He he's, he's thirsty to see results. Mm -hmm. So he now cut off the Ministry of Agri. He created a department on that CBN, empowered them for him to see results. But he should know that still CBN cannot make businesses. He should extend it to business people like us who has the experience and will tell him how we should go about it. Empower us and give us period of time. Let us deliver and you see visibly. All these speculations about export, export. If you want to see real export, it doesn't go one off. It has to be sustainable. And if you don't have the aggregation of what mm. you have locally, mm. you cannot meet up the, 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 the export you are, you're yearning to, to meet mm. up. Yeah, so yeah. Ally, partnering with the business, private partners, we are the ones who, if we see there is a ditch in our front, will, take, will change our cost. But government people doesn't. They will say it is, that is how they should do it. Mm. They will even write in mm. notes, I am directed to do this. Not you, you don't want to take the, 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 the responsibility of giving those mandates. Are you, are you encouraged to, you know, are you encouraged to sustain what you're doing with business visa? Um, yes, um, I am. 
If I had waited for the government sincerely, I don't think I'll be this encouraged. Yes, but you, 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 you now need encouragement. You now need support. Because if we are to contribute our quota, you know, to ensure that we, we succeed, you know, in preventing food insecurity, right. especially at this critical time, then everybody must, you know, join hands together. Absolutely. And that is where, you know, both of you come in. Yeah, so, so what, will be, what will be your advocacy now, you know, to, to those decision makers? Very simple. I'm speaking on behalf of a lot of other food processors, you know. Um, just make a brand switch. Make policies that will... Um, a brand switch, that's good. You mm. know, just make policies that would help, especially those in government and the rest of us, you know, to make a brand switch. Instead of eating a particular biscuit, replace it with Kura Crunch. Why? Because in buying Kura Crunch, you're empowering a lot of other people. Just move every day knowing that and making those simple switches. You know, instead of buying wheat flour, can I just try sesame flour today? Instead of buying mm. um, a certain kind of oil, foreign oil, you know, mm. we have lots of brands. Can I try, can I try um, sesame. Sesame, sesame oil, you know, instead? Just little things like that, mm. you know. Mm. She, talk, she talks about brand shift. Can you speak more? Because we have just a few minutes to wind down. Mm -hmm. This brand shift, how can we achieve that? Yes, we have to enlighten our people to know that no factory out there, no matter where the, it's coming from, that they will make a production, the best of their production to even to think of African market. <laughs> they will never do that. They, t they will only give you a residue of flavor of what they have taken from your own country. Mm -hmm. So if you know that, definitely they will not leave you into any branding. Yours is the tag. If you see made in Nigeria, go for it. You know it's 100% loaded. No addictive, no reduction as fresh as anything right. and we assured you we are not dirty people so th the sanity way of using this thing that's why we say okay yes we have agreed we don't have the right metal to use right. we are bringing their own metal to use it but then since they don't want to us to add value addition to it they frustrate us mm -hmm. give us make a, a, a sharpie uh, products for us mm -hmm. machines and we go there we have no choice i tell you there is a time I was given a, 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 a... You have to conclude your thoughts now. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, yes. fine. So basically, is patronize. We can meet up any standard and any market coming to you will come with own, its own specification. So don't bother yourself uh, packaging expensively without the market first. The market determines what you should, how your package should be. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, we should encourage to partner Imagine our numbers. If you said from now onward, anywhere you go, you look for Nigerian product, I tell you it's a win-win situation. You will see it will take off insecurity. It will take off in, uh, uh, it will give confidence to even those civil servants that are working and you are doing something by the side. And it will also generate more money for you, give you comfort. You will not have scared of anything and you will look very healthy uh, as well. Mo Mo Mohammed uh, Garbasani, or Mohammed Sani Garba, yes. uh, I'm, I'm really... Um, excited about what uh, both of you and Queen are, are doing. I'm a great advocate uh, for made in, you know, patronizing of made in Nigeria goods. Uh, I am happy when I see young, you know, men and women who are also pushing this effort. So I really like to appreciate you uh, for coming, you know, on late edition to share. Uh, your passion and your optimism in this country. Mohammed Sani Garba, thank you very much for coming. Okay. And, and Queen, what can I say to you? Uh, coming, living you know, the comfort of London, uh, you mm -hmm. know, to come back home and to you know, be a partaker in all of this, I do really appreciate you. Thank you uh, Queen uh, U Seria, thank you very much for thank coming. Thank you for having me. And so it's been a uh, long late edition today again. Uh, we need a, a brand shift. Uh, you need to ensure that you begin to patronize uh, locally or indigenous uh, products. Uh, they are sweeter, they are healthier, and of course, uh, they could be cheaper. So on that note, I'd like to appreciate you. On behalf of my production crew, I thank you and say bye-bye for now.